Okay, so uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone. Uh, thanking you for joining Shurendranath College for Women's uh, Web Lecture Series. My name is Autoshi Bhattacharya. Shurendranath College for Women was established in 1948, mainly for imparting higher education to girls. Making ordinary students self-reliant remains our stated mission. College has introduced a number of inno innovations, including extensive use of uh, uh, college auditorium, internet access to students for using e-resources, LCD projectors for using audiovisual clips, supplementing the traditional class methods. Department of Journalism and Mass Communication is one of the college's vibrant and lively department with its proactive students. Our students publish tabloid-sized lab journals where they publish their own writing and edit it too. They make small documentaries as well on local issues and edit them at the department's audiovisual lab. Uh, so today, if you have uh, any questions uh, during the session today, uh, please type the, um, them into the chat box. We will have the question answer ses session at the end to answer your questions. Link for the feedback will also be provided uh, in the chat box. So without uh, any further delay, let me begin by inviting Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey, Associate Professor and HOD Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Shurendranath College for Women. Uh, Dr. Uma Shankar Pandey has almost 18 years of uh, experience in academics and was a, a senior journalist with the Asian Age Kolkata before joining teaching. So it's my proud privilege to welcome sir on this virtual platform. Uh, over to you, sir. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining. It's a wonderful group of uh, very senior uh, teachers, students, uh, both from the PG and the UG courses uh, with uh, PhD scholars as well. And uh, it's my honor to present uh, before you uh, newspaper design using Scribers. I'm sure all of us, uh, many of us have worked on uh, page design earlier with uh, other uh, uh, proprietary software. Today, we are going to introduce uh, a uh, free and open source software, which is available, uh, you know, freely for all of us to download and use. So I'll be uh, talking about how to download Scribus and uh, some basics about uh, newspaper editing as well. As I go along, if you have a question, kindly put it on the chat box. And uh, because when I'm presenting, I'm not seeing the screen. I will just be seeing the demos that I'll be presenting. So uh, either uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Atashi Bhattacharya or Professor Jyoti Shao or uh, somebody else, uh, they will. Uh, uh, you know, put the questions to me as I'm going along. If there is anything that you have to ask me, please feel free to uh, interrupt because, you know, the idea is to make this as uh, useful as possible for everybody here. So uh, before we get uh, going, uh, let me tell you, let me show you how to download Scribus because downloading Scribus uh, involves downloading another particular software as well. So just let me uh, show you, uh, uh, first of all, how to download uh, Scribus from uh, so if you can see this, uh, this is the uh, scribus.net downloads window, and this is where you have to go. There are two versions you will see here. One is the stable version, which is the 1.4.8 version that we'll be using. The other is the beta version, which is the 1.5.1 version, or even you know the next uh, series 1.6, which is uh, uh, going to come very soon. Now, as you know, uh, these things, they keep on updating. So uh, whenever these things are updated, we can, you know, uh, update it uh, without any hassles. So you go to uh, this particular uh, uh, site and then you go to uh, downloads and that's how you download it. Uh, generally, we'll be uh, going for 64-bit, uh, 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 you know, windows. So uh, it, it's a fairly uh, simple thing for us. Uh, after this, this is just not enough because after we've downloaded this, we also have to download the uh, another thing which is known as the uh, ghost script. So let me show you uh, how to uh, uh, download that as well because uh, after you download Scribus, you'll have to download this particular script because that's how it works. So uh, if you just download Scribus, it, it will not work. You will have to download this as well. So you just type ghostscript.com uh, slash downloads and this is where you come and we have to uh, generally use you know the laptops or computer these days they will always be 64 bit we have to go for the ghost script agpl uh, the general public license version because the other version might uh, 
uh, ask for money. So we have to go for this AGPL uh, version. After we have downloaded that, we will be uh, getting the uh, scribus. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the Scribus interface. So uh, in today's uh, uh, lecture, I'm going to talk about the Scribus features. So let me just uh, start uh, sharing the Scribus features with you. Just a moment. And that's where our entire work will go on. Once you open Scribus, uh, this is what it looks like. It just looks like a, 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 you know, a, a normal uh, page design uh, interface. I will explain everything which is here. But before we start uh, with Scribus, there are certain things that have to be explained and, and, and you know, a certain uh, uh, measurements, etc., which have to be uh, decided first of all. So we'll have to uh, start with that first getting the measurements first, getting the page size first, getting the columns first. And then we will talk about uh, you know, uh, the do's and don'ts for newspaper design. I will uh, probably try and explain as much as possible in one session. And I'm sure after today's session, you will be able to uh, design one tabloid page all by yourself. So let's get going. Uh, if you see here, the first thing uh, 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 we have to talk about here is the preferences. Once you come to the preferences screen, there are certain general things that we have to talk about. Uh, if you can see this here, I have increased the font size uh, for the menus and the palettes to 10 point because I want it to be visible. The default is uh, 8 generally. If I want it to uh, go a little higher, then I can take it to 11 as well because you know I, I want uh, everybody to see those uh, uh, things uh, clearly. So this is how. If, if you can, if you have seen that, you know the font size of all these things they have increased. So uh, this is up to you, you know, for uh, uh, certain people, 11 or 12 is the normal size. Other people can work on 11 as well. Then at the document level, we have to make some other changes there. The, if, if you can see this carefully here, the page size default is always A4 and the orientation is always portrait. We can change it uh, as we go along. Uh, and the unit is always in points. So those of us who are used to working in uh, millimeter and centimeter, it will be easier if I go to and change it into millimeters right away, right at the beginning. Otherwise, you know, we'll have problems uh, with the margins and uh, all the other, uh, uh, you know, measurements that come up. So it's easier if I start uh, uh, the units in millimeters. And I, I can also change it to A3 because if I'm going to talk about a tabloid size, then it's better than uh, I have a size as A3, which I can obviously uh, change later on. I'll have to always keep on applying. Once it's applied, you know, uh, yeah, you can see that we, it's in millimeters and it's in height. So it's like uh, 297 uh, millimeters is the width and 420 is the height, but that can be changed. That's not an important thing. Uh, we can uh, show guides, we can, you know, uh, typography will come about that later on, you know, it is about, you know, uh, how much the subscript should go, so on and so forth. There is about hyphenation as well. Uh, what is the smallest word that should be allowed? And, you know, what are the consecutive hyphenations that are allowed? It's better that, you know, you can keep it uh, at, at the default level right at the first. Let's not uh, make it too confusing right here. So the important thing here is to change the units to millimeters right away. And if possible, to change the uh, size to A3 right at the beginning. Uh, we will generally go for single pages because if you are, uh, you know, talking about books and other things, then we'll have to go for uh, maybe double-sided or three-fold or four-fold. Because if you are, uh, you know, devising brochures, etc., then probably uh, three-fold will also be uh, very useful for us. But since we are uh, designing newspapers here, it's easier if I have uh, uh, this, uh, you know, double-sided thing there. So uh, this is uh, uh, where it is. Uh, the page size is A3. And it's in millimeters. So let's get going. 
in fact you're used to seeing uh, uh, you know five uh, uh, columns we can work on that also but i just wanted to uh, you know start uh, in a very simpler way uh, you can uh, uh, you know just like our other uh, page uh, softwares uh, page making software we can you know uh, make it fit to screen we can you know make it uh, uh, fit to height or width or to whatever we can make it fit to height so that we can see the entire screen together and if you see down here it is showing me that it is 39.79% so i'm seeing this uh, thing as a 39.79% there are shortcuts as i go along i'll talk about that as well but right now we know, we are putting it you know fit to height we can fit, uh, fit to uh, width as well two or three things that we should uh, uh, start getting uh, right at the beginning so that when we work along we know uh, what to uh, uh, you know get one is the properties the most important toolbox uh, in scribus is, is the properties there's a shortcut for that as well it's f2 so you can you can uh, slightly increase it as well you can uh, just resize it or you know place it to wherever you find comfortable you can you know place the um, page in the middle you can take it to the left or whatever everybody has his own way of working so whatever i'm showing is what i am comfortable with it's need uh, you need not you know work exactly like that uh we might need the layers uh, uh, thing as well here so you know you can have the layer thing just to explain because not many people are uh, comfortable working with layers but you know that's one thing that you can uh, keep on working as well another uh, thing which is probably uh, not so important right away but uh, we might need later on is about align and distribute because when we are talking about layers and those of you who already worked with uh, page design you know you know you'll have to send certain layers back we have to bring forth certain layers so these are the three things that we have to uh, get uh, on on your on our window so that you know while we keep working this will be uh, uh, you know uh, very convenient for us now uh, unlike other page design software much of the work we do here will be uh, at the click of a mouse there are shortcuts as well but not uh, for everything we may not have a shortcut so it is here that we'll have to work for if you see here these are just very normal things you know just file where i just showed you you know uh, uh it's it's saved as a, a scribus format we will probably do it at end uh, we can import whenever we have to get text or vector files or whatever i will talk about that as well it can be exported as an eps it can be exported as a pdf it it can be uh, saved as a, a, a scalable vector graph as well documents uh, set up i've just shown you preferences are very important because you know we need to change it to uh, millimeters right at the beginning edit you know we'll talk about uh, basically the action mode and you know when we talk of colors and styles we'll be talking about styles today that's where we'll come to edit uh, item unless i you know uh, uh, draw some uh, text box or picture box it will not be visible here so we can you know insert a text frame it's called a text frame here uh, uh, if you worked with quark etc you are used to talking about text boxes and picture boxes here we call them text frames and image frames we also have a render frame we'll talk about that the tables uh, etc we don't use uh, so much on page design it's we have other ways of doing it and shapes and uh, 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 you know bezier curves are uh, also uh, used at times uh, when we using uh, a single page probably that's not required viewing i have just uh, spoken to you about that if you want to get it 100% control 1 if you want to fit to height control 0 since i've already uh, used uh, fit to height i'm getting it as control 0 otherwise i can change from here as well if i if i if i'm comfortable looking for 50% of of the view then i'm better off uh, you know uh, having it like that so that i can also see the story as as we go along uh yeah we are not going to talk about extras right here uh, we might have uh, uh you know uh, scripts again you know that's slightly uh, out of uh, today's uh, presentation and then this is what we've already shown that we wanted to have properties this is the properties box we have to get from windows or the shortcut is f2 we also to get the layers box uh, which is uh, f6 and there are uh, there's the uh, align and distribute uh, pre flight very uh, very favorable etc we are not going to talk about that now uh, action history if you are doing redoing etc we might need bookmarks when we are having long books or you know we have uh, uh, many pages there so this is not just for for uh, 
newspaper page design. This is for uh, every kind of uh, graphics. So that's where it is used for. So now let's going. Uh, let's get going. Uh, on the palette box here as well, you can see this is the select item tool. If I just press C, this will be selected. Immediately after that, there is the text frame. Uh, if I want to get text, in fact, I will want to get text uh, very, very often. So that's what I'll have to go for. This is the insert image frame, the two most important uh, functions here. The text frame, the shortcut is just T. Image frame, the shortcut is just I. And then uh, you know a render frame, that's uh, for linking it to LaTeX and you know other kind of things, and tables and boxes and shapes and you know lines and Bezier curves, and you know uh, we might need to rotate or, or zoom in and zoom out or whatever. Uh, here as well, if you see, here is, is where uh, this is the layer tool, which is just showing the background now because only one layer is being used here. So if you're not uh, very comfortable working with layers right away, then you don't have to start working with layers. Otherwise, we keep on adding layers here. If you can see here, you know, uh, on, on the right side of the screen, we keep on adding layers here. So you might have text on one layer. You might have graphics on one layer. And uh, those of you who have worked with photo editing uh, uh, software and other, you know, uh, page editing software, we, you, we know, you know, what layers do. When you're working on one layer, it does not affect the other layer. So once you go uh, uh, along to the next uh, step, then you can do that. Since I have uh, selected this new layer here, you can see here that this new layer has been selected here. If I select this one, then the background will be selected. So if you're working with layers, we have to be very careful because we might have drawn a text box here. Uh, let me just show you right at the beginning so that you know you realize you know where we can go wrong. Say, for example, I draw a text box here. And then I, for, by mistake or by whatever means, I go to the next layer. I cannot, you know, uh, uh, Select it at all because it's on a different layer. So when we are working with layers, we have to be very, very careful to you know work at the same layer where uh, you know we have uh, uh, drawn our initial uh, uh, boxes. So if I go back to background, that's where you know I can uh, you know change it or you know I can uh, resize it or whatever. So be careful about you know when we are talking about uh, uh, layers. It's 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 very useful, but we must be careful about you know when we are working with that. Uh, these are about the X and Y positions. This is the normal vision. When we have a lot of other options, we can see, you know, this is this is about color management. So if we uh, have uh, uh, different colors that we want to create, then, you know, we go for this color management. So this is the entire uh, work area so far. If there are any questions, uh, 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 you know, at, till this time, yeah, you will get recordings of the session. It will be, you know, shared on YouTube. If there are any questions as of now, then I will go on to designing the page. Is everything clear right from, you know, how to download the pages to getting the uh, Go script and to, you know, understanding uh, where are the properties and so on and so forth. So uh, that is uh, clear to everybody, right? So let me go back to the page here. You go back to the page. Is this visible? The page is visible to everyone? Yes, sir. Thank you. So uh, this is the uh, uh, text box. Say, for example, I want to create a newspaper uh, mastered here. Then this is how we go there. Uh, you can see the boxes. Whenever we can see these boxes, we can resize the boxes to wherever we want to fit there. There are two options that I want to show you. The options are uh, snap to grid and snap to guides. So uh, snap to grid means if we take it closer to, you know, this, if you can see this yellow line, uh, these, uh, these uh, blue lines, if I take it closer to that and if the snap to grid is, uh, 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 you know, put on, then this will just snap and this will just touch at the edges. So it's generally desirable to, you know, uh, snap to uh, grid and snap to guides as well. So if I take it here, you see, it will automatically, you know, snap itself to the uh, outer grid there. Or so there's a value for that as well. And snap to guide is for, you know, when we have all those uh, baseline uh, uh, guides, we can uh, see, I'll, I'll talk about that later on, but snap to guides is also useful as uh, well. Now, if you want to type anything here, there are many ways in which you can get text there. The simplest way is to, I'm, I'll ask everyone to please uh, mute your uh, audio. Otherwise it will be problem for everyone. If I type anything here, uh, 
I'll have to simply go to the properties box to make any changes here. Uh, there are uh, uh, no direct changes. So I go here and here I can see uh, this particular text thing. So I'll have to click onto the text uh, uh, thing on the property. Somebody's audio is not muted. Kindly mute your audio, everybody. Right. So uh, this one is uh, a 12 point and this is just regular Arial font. I might want some other font. So I'll have to uh, mm, go for, for, for some... Uh, I might uh, uh, want that to be in a large font size, so I'll go for that. You can see the letting space, which is the fix, uh, which is which is you know there here present in two ways. The default is fixed line spacing at 15 points. Now, those of us who have worked and who you know uh, uh, who teach uh, page design classes, we know that letting is generally 20% more than the point size. So if I keep the fixed line spacing at 15 points, and if I type anything more, or if I go uh, to the next uh, 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 thing there, uh, and, and you know, uh, if for example, I, I, I uh, convert it into two things, then you can see that these things are almost touching onto each other because the leading is so small. So it, it's better that either we have the leading as auto, or we, uh, uh, you know, if we are putting it manually, then we put it at, at least 20% more than that. So if it is 64, 20% uh, 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 more than that would be around, uh, uh, you know, uh, adding 12 or 13 to that, 77 or 78. Or you can, you know, simply go for automatic line spacing. If you go to automatic line spacing, then it will take the same uh, value by itself. This one here is about aligning it to the left or to the center or to the right or justified or force justified. So if I have to, you know, go for a text box and if I'm if I have to justify the text there, then this is how I go there. I go to the text box. I, I, I uh, click one of these things and this is how it comes out. So uh, this is uh, the uh, first step of, you know, uh, drawing the, uh, uh, or getting some text onto a text box straight away. So uh, we type in there, we cannot make the changes right there. We'll have to uh, go to the, uh, uh, you know, text thing on the uh, properties box. And this is where we can, you know, change the font and we can change the leading. We can, we'll talk about the tracking and all other things also, but right now uh, this is uh, where we stop. And if I want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, this can be just dragged anywhere that we want to, just like uh, our, our normal stuff. So uh, when we are uh, talking about uh, text boxes, uh, we might also need to have a text box to have our uh, stories, for example. Uh, if we want to align it, you know, uh, at a different point, we want to uh, vertically, you know, change the alignment, then I'll have to change the X positions. So if here you can see the X position here is 19, here I'll have to change it to a bigger figure, then it will, sorry, it will have to be height. Uh, there are rotations, etc. required, but we are not going to talk about rotations here. Now let's talk about getting text here. Uh, Scribus provides us with a view, uh, uh, provides us with a lot of uh, uh, different ways of getting text uh, uh, onto the... Let's get sample text here. It will provide me sample text in many languages. Say, for example, I want some sample text to work on. So uh, I don't have to type in anything. I just have to tell Scribus to give me sample text and it will give me a lot of uh, sample text which I can work upon. Now I want to, uh, uh, you know, uh, change a lot of, uh, you know, things here. I want to change, for example, the number of columns here. So I will have to do it at, you know, this level. I might, so if you can see here, uh, this is where I change the number of columns. A 
I'm not going to talk about colors and effects right away. So let's talk about you know how to work on these columns. Now, uh, to edit this text or to format this text, we'll have to do a lot of different things. So let us talk about how to format text first. If you preview this, you can see there is no box over here. These are just, you know, as, as we know with, with page making software, these boxes are just indicators. So let's first of all talk about how to make those boxes. And then we will talk about, you know, the uh, second part will be how to format the text. And in the third part, I'll talk about how to get an image and how to get the text flowing around the image. And if we have time after that, we'll talk about other things as well. So to get uh, a text box uh, uh, with other software, it's, it's pretty uh, simple. But here you'll have to go just two steps. First of all, you'll have to check about line. And then uh, you'll have to decide what kind of a line you want. You just want a straight line or you want a, and then you know what, what do you want the line width to be? You want it to be small if you want it to be, uh, you know, hairline or you want it to be something bigger than that. So let's talk about the hairline first. So we decide on the line to go around this thing first. Then we, uh, you know, click on color and you will see two things over here. This is about the uh, line properties and this is about the fill properties. So I'll talk about the fill properties as well. Now you click onto the uh, uh, line property and then we'll have to uh, uh, talk about the colors. Because here there is none selected here. So we select black over here and just see if, if you see the this is a preview. This is not the, uh, uh, if you can see the preview where we have the box around the thing, this is not our uh, uh, regular, this is not a regular, you know, text frame. This is where we have added a hairline to uh, our, uh, I hope you can see that, you know, we've added a frame to the box here. So adding a frame is, is, is a very simple step. Uh, basically it's two steps. We first go to the line, then we decide what kind of a line we want to draw. If I want to draw a thicker line, maybe one millimeter, you can see it's thicker. If I want to change the color, uh, in fact, the uh, default color is none. So I change it to black. You know, we can change uh, any kind of a color. In fact, there are lots of color options there. We can create colors as well, but we are not going that way right now. If you want to change the background as well, that's also we can do here. We can change the background. If I put all black here, this is all black. If I uh, change the shade, this is how I add the tint to my uh, uh, text. So if I want to add a gray tint over there, I just go to, uh, I'll have to go the same way. I go to line, then I go to colors, and this is where I add the color. So this is what uh, 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 the text looks on my page right now. So we have learned how to draw text boxes. We've learned how to create a fill. So whenever I'm drawing maybe uh, some kind of a blurb or you know a slug line or whatever, this is how we have to do. We'll have to draw a text box. This is the text box. Or I just press in T, then that's where I get the text box. Whatever I have to type, I type in over there. Uh, Then I uh, go to the text. I decide. I'm sure uh, those of us, you know, who worked on uh, uh, typography, we know that if we are working on reverse text or whatever, it's always better to go for a sans serif font. It's not advisable to go for a serif font if you're using, uh, a, you know, a reverse type or whatever. Let me make it a little bigger.
as you can see i'm trying to get the uh, text a little lower the text was touching the uh, top there so i want to get it lower so how do i do that i uh, go to text i go to columns and distances and from the top i put in some offset so it will come down from there now it's easier now i know what is to be done i just uh, uh, go to uh, line i go to uh, if i want to draw a line you know i'll have to uh, create that line over there then i go to colors then the outline will be black if i want the uh, fill to be black as well i make it black and if i want the color to uh, uh, of of the text uh, uh, to be different i will you know change the color of the text as well so uh, that's how uh, so the uh, this is how we have just this is not a very uh, good looking slug but this is how we work with slugs or working uh, you know uh, some kind of a reverse as you can see there this does not the text is at the back here uh, let me just zoom it a little bit the text is not automatically flowing there so that that will have to be worked around this is something that has to be uh, worked around when we come to uh, this is where we have to go we have to use the frame shape let me show you again now you can see that the text is flowing around another thing i just want to show you if you see uh, uh, the text here it is almost touching over here i want it to just you know uh, have some space over that i'm, I'm sure uh, you can see that i mean if you see it closely uh, if you see this great and this thoroughly and this for and all this is touching the line over here and i want to have some space around that because you know i can keep on changing that but a uh, certain kind of uh, all that will be you know different i can you know make it shorter also but even then certain kind of uh, things they are always touching there so i can use a contour line this looks uh, uh, confusing but it is very very simple when we are using contour lines you can see that the line has changed to blue over here and if you can see here uh, there is there is this thing which is enlarging the path by 10% this one is enlarging the path by 10 mm so if i let's press that this will increase it but if i just edit the contour line i'm sure you can see that the just the contour line is being increased that means they are increasing the space between the text and the frame over here so how did i do that i'll just show that once again uh say for example this is disabled now you see so i'm just repeating it once again when it is disabled the text is behind there because if the text is behind there then you know it, it is getting hidden i need the text to be uh, you know flowing around this slug line so how do i do that i go to properties i go to shape and then i use use frame shape or i can even use use contour line you know uh since the earlier contour line we had already increased it you can see that you know it is going across you know it is not touching here so we had already edited so we go to edit and we edit the contour line and this is what you can see this blue line is where we have said that okay the text has to be outside this yellow line i can decrease that as well this one is uh, increasing and this one is decreasing if if you can see this this is where we increase the contour line if i keep on increasing that it will keep on going away the text is going away so if you want a lot of white space there this is how you do that so this gives us uh, with a lot of options of increasing that but uh, say for example i don't want that much space so uh, can you see uh, can someone tell is uh, just switch on and uh, just let me know whether all it, uh, this all makes sense or not yes sir okay thank you very much so this is where we you know uh, we we bring around this text outset you know if we want to uh, make the text flow away from or, or you know closer to the uh, you know other it could be a picture as well I'll, i'll show you with a picture also so this is how we go there we either uh, you know we have to edit the contour line 
there we have to talk about using contour line and then you will have to edit the contour line we can also increase the text box also if i am not just editing the contour line if i am just you know enlarging this then this will be enlarged if you can see that the the slug line itself is getting enlarged if i want to enlarge uh, some of the slug line i can you know work on the text later on but if i want to uh, you know just increase the contour line to increase it by 10% so that's a very a very nice way of you know uh, uh, changing the text shape and changing the way we work with uh, uh, you know slug lines and all that so till now we worked about you know how to flow in text how to uh, uh, make these slug lines how to uh, you know make text flow around that and so on and so forth that this is uh, a very uh, uh, useful way of working with that let me again you know go back to this text uh, box and let us just talk about uh, columns and text distances this is how we change the column and we we want to you know change the text uh, uh, you know from the left and the right and everywhere we want some gap there it is just very strictly this touching there so i don't want it to be like that so i can i can simply you know keep on changing all this uh, say for example i want a 5 mm gap so this is the gap between the columns i didn't like the earlier gap so i have increased the gap between the columns here and here again you know from top bottom and everything i can keep on changing that you can see it has come down by 5 mm so uh, we can you know link everything to go exactly by 5 mm this has gone up by 5 mm so the text inset is where uh, uh, you know we have a lot of uh, things in our hand now this looks a lot more cleaner because as you know when it goes for printing we need some space between the text and the box itself and if there's no space then it makes for very bad reading so uh, that's what we uh, intended to do here and this is a very easy way of changing the uh, so if you if you can uh, understand you know there are two things that we've done here one was that if you have another text box and if you want a distance we want an outset distance from this box and the text that is flowing around so that is uh, uh, i showed you how to do that and here this is about the inset how much inside we want the text to be that uh, inside the text box so that's a very easy way of doing it now uh, let us talk about the uh, second most important thing that is about uh, uh, you know formatting the text and so on and so forth so let's start working on the text format right now so i'll remove the preview mode i will i can see that so i can see all these things here as you can see this is this is a very simple uh, illustration of you know the distance that we can see here now i want the text to have a particular styles so uh, like every good uh, page design software we can work with styles here as well uh no we're not going to talk about color effects we are going to talk about style settings if you see here generally there is no uh, style that is the default and if you want to you know uh, edit the style we'll have to uh, just a second there are many ways in which we can edit the style uh, so i can see uh, the paragraph style and the character styles uh, character uh, styles there are two there is the default paragraph style and the line style so i might want to create a new one i want to create a new paragraph style we'll have to name it something let's name it uh, body text uh there are two ways of doing it i'll just show you the uh, text editor also but here i'm showing you uh, outside the text editor there is a text editor which is uh, special to uh, scribers i'll just show you that in a moment but i wanted to show you this because you know uh, this is a very simple way of doing if i want drop caps at every paragraph then i simply have to you know click this uh, drop caps and i'll have to say how many lines do i want it to drop to So let's say I just want the drop caps to drop down to just two lines. Uh, we can increase the distance also. I'm not going to talk about distance right away. Uh, what is the uh, font that we want? What is the font size we want? Two very important things here, and let me show you using this one. Uh, 
if I want to increase the distance between the words, here it is zero. If you can see this here, this is what we uh, know as tracking. If I increase it, say for example, 10, Oh, I'll have to apply there. This space between the letters will start increasing. Anyway, let's go back to this and then I'll, I'll talk about the tracking and curling in, in, in a moment's time. So I, I, I have, you know, increased the uh, space between uh, the words to 10. Say, for example, I want it to be all bold, then you will have to go for, uh, uh, you know, going uh, you know changing it all over there I, I might want uh, all caps or whatever this is where I go for you know the character style here the style can be bold I have created a, a thing called uh, bo body text where it's of 12 point it's bookman old style I can increase the font size also say for example 13 If I select it now and I go to text and I go to uh, style settings, the body text that I've just created will now be visible. I, if I click it over here, you can see everything is now having a drop cap. I'm just trying to show you just to show you that, you know, we can create uh, or in fact, we should have a lot of style sheets when we are working so that we don't have to uh, keep changing the way we work uh, as we go along. So this is what uh, uh, we've done. We've changed it to, you know, drop caps at every paragraph. And we know that if we just, you know, change the paragraph, that, that, that all caps will go away. If I just want to work only with paragraphs, there's another way of doing it. But uh, just I had to show you here. If you can see this closely here, I'm sure you can see that. You, you can see that the distance between the words has increased here because I had changed the tracking by 10%. So that is what, uh, uh, you know, I've done here. This is not a regular way of doing it. Just to show you that this is how we design pages. This is how we have space between letters or we, we have to, uh, or we can, you know, work with that as well. So uh, that's one way of changing the style. We add it to the style sheet and then we, or if we just don't like the style sheet, let's go back and change the first line offset. We can, you know, uh, we have other advanced settings as well. So I'll, I'll just want to, you know, go back to this as well, the one that I was showing you here. Let's say, for example, uh, this is important. We should know about tracking and curling here. If we go to this uh, uh, style settings, So whatever I add, it, it just you know shows me what has become, what does become. Yeah. So let me just go back to you know changing it because I've changed the style, so the style style has changed. If I don't want to use style sheet and I just want to work with the uh, curling and all, how do I go about that? Just let me change it again. Yeah. Let's come to this advanced setting. If you can see this here, this is showing 0%. If I add 10 here, can you see the uh, distance between the words has increased? If I add 20 here, the distance will increase further. And it will increase so much that it will go to the next line. So this is what we need to do at times when we have to fit in the headline and we don't have enough words. At times, we have to increase the space between the letters. And that is known as tracking. So generally, it is at zero. But at times, we have to increase it to a certain limit so that we have certain space there. Because a lot of white space also doesn't look good. If I just want to you know, uh, increase space between just two letters, I just want the space between T and H to be very high. 
then that is known as kerning. So what I do is I just you know uh, uh, press over here and say for example I put uh, 25 here. You can see I have just increased the space between these two letters between T and H. So that's one way of doing it. So I, I just uh, uh, you know can increase the letter between uh, increase the space between individual letters or I can increase the space between all the words there. So that's a very important part of newspaper design where we'll have to keep on talking about uh, tracking and curling. And when we are adding style sheet, uh, when we are using you know style sheet, we can create one for headline as well. Say for example, I want to create a, a headline style sheet. Then I'll just go to new. Then I, sorry, I'll go to edit styles, or I'll use F3 as well. I'll create new, or I'll start with a paragraph style. It can go to any style. First of all, I'll give it a name. Say, for example, I want it to be a different from one we are using right now, so that you can see the difference. I want it to be of 64 point always. Uh, do I want to, th this one is about tracking, which I just showed you. So uh, I'm not using anything here. There are two other options here. One is about the horizontal scaling. I can scale it horizontally. I can make it appear, you know, horizontally uh, elongated. So let me just show you here. If I use 200 years, for example. Uh, and let's say that we have uh, we have decided this to be the uh, headline. So this will be about each paragraph. Here at each paragraph, I can give it a different style. So as you remember, in the first uh, style that we showed you, we had, we were using a drop cap, and I'm sure you understand that every paragraph cannot have a drop cap. So for the first paragraph, I might you know just use a, a because it, it, it is available to me as a drop down menu. So I can go for uh, maybe the body text. The second paragraph can be uh, uh, maybe default paragraph style. The third one can be a default paragraph style or whatever. So I can change it individually as well. The earlier one I showed you was about all the, the text. Here it is about uh, you know changing it individually. And then I have to click onto that tick and then everything changes. So this is how we, uh, you know, edit text over here. This is how we format text. The formatting can be about justification. It can be about the distance between words. It can be about distance between uh, paragraphs. It can be about the leading size. You know, we have put it at 20%. Uh, we can, if you want to increase the leading, we can increase the leading as well. Uh, the last thing that I wanted to show you today was about uh, inserting picture boxes and getting uh, pictures there. So I can insert an image frame. Uh, And similarly, you know, just like uh, uh, text boxes, we can get it from a particular file. Because as you know, that the page uh, design software is only for designing and formatting, etc. It's not for, uh, uh, you know, composing. So we can get text uh, uh, from our Word file also using Control I, and here also, you know, the image also with the same thing. So if I click onto Control L, then I'll have to look for places where, you know, my uh, Pictures are saved, and I can go there and I can talk about, uh, uh, you know, getting pictures from there over here. So that is where you know uh, we can get images. We can you know even work with uh, vector graphics. Uh, I'm sure we know about vector graphics as well. Uh, when when we talk about pictures, we are talking about two different things. We are talking either about raster, you know, when, when we get it in the JPEG or the TIFF or the other formats, we are talking in terms of raster images. When we are talking of, uh, you know, uh, uh, files that we are using to draw lines and all, that is a different kind of a uh, file and it is known as a SVG, scalable vector image. Uh, we can, in, uh, you know, insert lines here as well. We can, incre uh, you know, insert uh, uh, paths here as well. Uh, I'll, I'll, you know, leave it to the questions when we go there. I just don't want to. So just to uh, uh, remind you, we, know just, we uh, learned about how to add text boxes. And we also learned how to uh, flow text around the boxes. We also uh, spoke about uh, uh, you know styles. We also spoke about, uh, sorry. Yeah, 
we also showed you how to use style sheets we also showed you how to create the slug line we also showed you how to create a, 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 you know screen for our thing i just showed you a gray screen it could have been anything uh, similarly we can you know uh, the exactly the same way that we use the slug you know for uh, flowing the text down we can use the same for uh, using text uh, you know picture boxes as well here uh, the important thing to remember is that if we want the text to flow around a particular distance from the slug line we'll have to go to the contour we'll have to go to the shape we'll have to use the contour line and then we'll have to uh, uh, you know edit the contour lines and if you're editing the contour lines then we'll make sure that you know the text flows around the particular shape and uh, uh, so we'll uh, stop here and whatever if there are questions i'll try and answer the questions there in fact i would love to have uh, uh, any any question on any anything because uh, there are many many things over here and uh, based on uh, what you uh, people ask me i will you know add to that otherwise we've already you know completed almost 1 hour of the thing so the more you get into it the the better you know you you become at uh, a scribes so uh, are there questions anybody you know sp sir you can also have questions uh, uh, sir, so, oh, I saw some questions in the chat box. And now, now the chat now, now the chat box is gone because you know uh, uh, my link went away. Oh. So if sir, one of you can. Huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, I asked that the can can scribbles be used in Mac? Yeah, yeah. It, it can be used in Linux, Mac, uh, Windows, everything. Okay. Uh, level uh, no we are talking about layers so you know uh, yeah there's a question on uh, uh, layers it's not level basically it's a uh, layer so what we can do is uh, 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 say for example uh, we are all working on this on a background layer so i could you know use a text layer and you know uh, i can uh, add things on a text layer so i'll be working on two different layers i can you know keep on uh, adding layers just i you know uh, 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 so, so this this shows me that these are the two layers so one is the uh, background layer and this is the text layer so if i if i want want on the text uh, if i want all the text on the text layer i can do that in fact i can bring it forwards and backwards also i, I wanted to show you that part also but uh, unfortunately we uh, so let me just show you here See, this one is uh, uh, one level above. So, if I want to go it one level beyond, I can, you know, uh, just uh, use this to take it one level beyond as well, so that it 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 will go behind. It will not be available right at the top. There, there so I can a, bring uh, I can bring it forward and backward as well. There is a uh, feature called uh, level in the text box. So. I didn't get it. There is a feature. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That that is that is about right, 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 right. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So basically, you know, uh, this as this is what I was showing you. This is on the top. Can you see that? This is at the top. I can, I can, I can bring it down. If I bring it down, as you can see, it has gone. It is not visible. So it's just like sending backwards or forward. It is one level behind. If I if I bring it one level up, then it is out over here. Thank you for the question. This is an important question. This is what I wanted to show you. If I just put it here, it, it will be more visible to you. If you see it here, this is at one level. If I if I bring it one level down, then it has gone back. Can you see this? This this has gone behind this particular text box. Can you see that? Yes or no, everybody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So this is the level. This is the level. I need to you know go behind, or I will need to. In fact, if it is if it is not at the top layer, I must ensure that it is at the top layer. I must ensure it is here. If it is not here, then it is uh, of no use to me. I can lock this as well. You know, there are too many things that I can. In fact, I can rotate it as well. You know, using this as a base point, I can, I can, I can, you know, keep rotating it. I can, you know, just join it over here. So if, if I want to rotate it, uh, some degrees, I can rotate that here. So all this stuff is possible. So if I wanted something like this, I can do that as well. So as I said, you know, we are just having an introductory class, so we had to leave it at one level. Is that clear? Yes. Right, right, right. So I just want to ask one thing. Uh, like uh -huh. any uh, any newspaper or any magazine, there is a master page. 
Ah, yeah, 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 you have master pages as well. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you have, you have master pages here as well. You know, you can edit master pages, you know, you can have a style sheet for that and you can use it to like, so yeah, it's there. Didn't want to go to master pages right away, but yes, it's there. We can go to edit master pages. We can make it a master. In fact, we have, we can have different master pages for page one, for left page, we can have a different master page for right page. We can have different master page. So we can have all those master pages. But the style sheet is where you have to work and uh, this properties is where the entire action is. I didn't talk about the align and distribution and all because in one hour thing, we don't want to get into right. too much of that. We can also, you know, go to opacity, you know, we can increase the or decrease the opacity. If I, if I want, you know, I can, uh, you know, change the opacity of this to be a little more transparent. So if I want to, uh, the slug line, which has been selected, if I change the opacity, okay. uh, in fact, both have been selected. So the opacity has gone down, as you can see here. Can you can you see this here? Is it flickering? I guess. Yes, yes, yes. Any any other question? Sir, a question from Mahin Muhammad. Is there any shortcut key for align and attribute? No, there is no shortcut key. You know, you'll have to. Uh, in in fact, uh, the key I'll just show you. Yeah? The align and attribute is there. You know, it is it is to align things along. Maybe uh, uh, you know. Relative to the thing you select first, relative to the last thing, relative to the page. So you might, you know, want to align things relative to the page, to the margin, to the guide, to the uh, selection. So you just select those objects and then you decide on aligning. So this is where uh, the aligning attribute is there. So you go to uh, Windows, you select aligning attribute. It, it it comes on and then you decide what are the top, what are the uh, boxes that I want to align. What are the boxes I do not want to align. So this is how it is. Sir, another question from Asha Arjun Yadav. How uh -huh. to edit and adjust the text? What would be the text size and font in broadsheet and tabloid? Yeah, it depends, you know, uh, that depends on the style sheet. Generally, uh, uh, when we uh, have headlines, it has to have a minimum of 18 points. It has to have a particular leading size. It has to have a particular tracking size. So it depends on, on different newspapers. It depends on different font styles, on different types of uh, fonts that we're using. At, at, at the same type size, different fonts might look uh, bigger or smaller. Say, for example, type fonts which have a bigger, uh, uh, you know, which have a smaller X height, they will appear smaller or they might or, or somebody with a bigger X height will appear bigger. So generally 9, 10, 11, you know, it depends on which font we're using and what is the style sheet. Uh, the editing again uh, has to be done, you know, by just going to edit text and the editing is done at the story editor level and we add the style sheet over here and we can you know we, we can make it bold or you know we can increase the tracking and curling right over here we can you know keep on changing their you know things as you can see everything that we've spoken about so far is available in the uh, uh, edit text in the story editor thing so i can simply go and you know talk about you know changing the style sheet over here so it's better to start with style sheets where we are already adding the type font we're adding the type size we're adding the leading and we're adding the tracking. So these are the important things. We can also have the text inside or we can also have, uh, you know, uh, the first line can, might, might, might be having some indentation, etc., etc. So uh, there, there's lots to be done there. So just an introduction so far. Okay. So one question, sir. Which software would you prefer in design or describers for page design? There's no choice at all. I will prefer this because I'm not paying any money here. And uh, we are not going to talk about, uh, you know, piloted software. So uh, we will always go for scribbles because there's, we are not paying a single press over you. Okay, thank you. Sir, again, a question from uh, Mahin Muhammad. Sir, huh. will you please tell how to download Scribus? Yeah, you, uh, first of all, you know, you go to Scribus, uh, uh, just a second. Uh, First is you, you know, you go to the Scribus site and that's where, you know, you'll have to download the Windows 64 bit. It is for, uh, it's for many other things. I'm just talking about Windows here. You know, you can have it for Mac, you can have it for Linux, you can have it for many other, uh, you know, things. So here is the Windows thing. So you, you know, you type, you know, you click over here, you uh, get that. And then after that, you'll have to also download uh, uh, the ghost script. And that without without that Go script, it doesn't work. So we'll have to download this thing as well. 
so we have to download one after the other after we have downloaded scribus we'll have to download this ghost script file as well and the file that we've uh, spoken about is the ghost script 9.5.2 for windows 64 bit and we'll go for this agpl license so we are downloading both these two things one after the other sir another question from siddharth chatterjee sir uh -huh. how to export print ready page yeah that is a very simple option let me just go over there uh, yeah that's a good question because uh, we didn't uh, go to that part the option is uh, yeah let me just close it file i i started off with that file export save as pdf so we can save as pdf in fact in pdf also there are uh, eight different options so we can you know generally best to save it as pdf if you can uh, if you save it as eps then it will be as a picture file so it depends on 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 what your printer is comfortable with many people are comfortable with epf or tif files then you go to epf and then you uh, you know have a tif file or you can go as a pdf you in fact we can also have interactive pdfs but uh, that's not what we are discussing today sir maybe the last question uh, ah. shravani pal can we use any language here yeah 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 whatever uh, fonts are installed on in your system they will be visible on the uh, text thing there okay sir yeah if the sir. text copy uh, i copy does not fit in you know i can uh, uh, i have to either edit out the text or you know i have to because if the dummy has been created i can't have extra text that is why we have the inverted pyramid structure often so that we can you know cut out the text and that's why the editing job is so challenging that you know if it doesn't uh, fit there we'll have to make sure that it fits there uh, sir uh, there is uh, just one question uh, from shabani wall can sh uh, she is asking can we use any other language like yeah, other language? yeah we can we can if if the language is available on your uh, uh, system then it will be available for it and to use on scribus okay and from siddharth chatterjee how to export the print ready yeah i i i, I answered that? That, yes i answered that we will uh, uh, you know uh, export it as a pdf or we can export it as a eps as well the image adjustment between text yeah uh, uh, what we did was you know we went to the contour line and we increase the contour so that the uh, uh, line would go away and if you are having an image box you fit the image to the box so that you know we uh, uh, you know have the proportions there as well you want me to show the uh, image text do we have time for that or do we have time for that Do you want? Do you want me to show the image uh, thing? Yeah, I'll, I'll show that. Right. Show it. Show it. No it problem. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just. Uh, but I don't know why it is flickering all the time. Yeah. i'm working on a system where i don't work very often that is why a lot of pictures are not over here so just let me see if i can get some pictures over here so this is the last time the 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 the, the poster we had in our last session so uh, i as you can see the image is uh, uh, you know slightly uh, bigger so what we do is we go to edit image or we have to adjust the image to the frame so here the image has been adjusted to the frame but the frame is still longer so now i'll click and i will adjust the frame to the image so this is the entire image can you see that here yes, yes or no sir. yes sir right so after i have the image there are a lot of things you know i can do uh, you know i can i can you know uh, i can uh, change the shape i can you know uh, uh, you know do a uh, all those things there i can also edit it you know to to uh, image effects i can make it blurred you know I, i just have to see the blur over here and if i you know increase the uh, radius over here this thing will be blurred can you see this blur over here 
if i need to blur the image i can yes, blur sir. it over yes, yes if i if i need to change the brightness over there you know i can uh... so we just go to image effects we can go to brightness we'll have to change for brightness you know we can make it more bright or we can make it less bright right we want to colorize it you know we'll have to take colorization there and you know we can uh, add a tint over there if you want to have a green tint you know it will have a green tint or if you want to have a uh, whatever tint i want to add if i want to have a greater uh, uh, contrast i'll let put over contrast there and you know i can keep on changing that i don't want colorization there i'll bring it back so colorization has changed brightness also i don't want i'll bring it back to my thing over here so there's a lot of editing that i can do it over here as well in fact i can even change the shape of of uh, the text uh, of the image box to you know uh, uh, adjust it to you know uh, different levels i can go to uh, you know just a second i can make it a rounded shape if i add the rounds over here i can you know change it to a if you can see that it has become a little bit more rounded i can add maybe more here can you see this here this has become rounded here yes sir. Mm -hmm. yes sir. right right and if i want the text to flow because if uh, if you see it right now the text is not flowing around the uh, if you see it now the text is not flowing around the text is behind that so we'll just do the same thing once again we'll go to uh, uh shape and we'll say either use the frame shape or we'll use the contour line so if you use the contour line we'll have to draw that contour line if i use the shape now the text is flowing around that but if you see that the text is still touching the picture here so what do we do for that we use the contour line and we'll have to uh, edit the contour line and if i just increase the contour line without editing the contour line see the picture will start getting bigger right so so that doesn't work i'll have to edit the contour line and then i'll have to increase this now you, you can see the text is going away from the picture can you see that yes sir yes sir yes yeah. so that is what we do we can you know we can have the shape also right now this is rectangular we can have it just like a, a bounding box also so we can change the shape we can have it in a pentagon or any kind of a shape so for now you know you can add nodes over there uh, we can add nodes and you know we can make it of a different shape can you see this here this this is where we add nodes yes sir yeah and then you can you know you can change the nodes you can bring it uh -huh. so if it goes lot inside then it will probably not do but we we can change the nodes to flow the text around this will of course not be visible when we go for uh, the preview mode only the text which we are seeing will be visible this uh, node will all not be visible there so i'm sure this makes uh, uh, sense to you and you can work along uh, doing a lot of things there if there are other questions please Sir, let me know another question another question from siddharth chatterjee can we divide the column first and then insert the text box into yeah the yeah, as yeah, yeah, we, yeah yes 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 of course we can do that we 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 can do that uh, yeah so uh, in fact when we are making the text box we can specify even before bringing the text how many columns we want to in fact even on the page when we are starting it we can you know we can see that so let me just show you uh, when we are starting we can start off with uh, just a second uh, just give me a moment uh, i'll go back and start a fresh page and then uh, then you know probably it will be clearer uh if you can see here we can go for automatic text frames 
and we can say that we need uh, five columns right at the beginning right and if you click here we're getting it just like you know our normal uh, quark pages and all we can just use them as a guide i'm sure uh, this makes sense right is is this clear we have we are starting off with uh, five yes, columns straight away and then you know we can you know insert the text frames and we can make uh, uh, we can we can we can decide about you know uh, how much columns will be there right at the beginning so this is what he was saying i'm sure he was talking about uh, can you see this here we have already made into three columns here so if you if you yes. flow in text if you flow in text here the sample text you want it in some other language french greek or whatever so just for a uh, thing let us bring in greek letters here so you can see we are getting it in three things over here and you know that if we can change the gap between them we can change the leading between them we can change the uh, this fixed line spacing can be auto and i'm sure you know about line spacing and all that we can change the gap and if we don't want it to be you know touching the things we can just you know change the top round bottom and all so it will come a little inside in fact we can also link our uh, text boxes because you can see there is a lot of uh, text outside here so we can bring uh, make another uh, uh, text box and we can link it over there as well just a moment i'll show you so normal things that you can do it in any kind of a software we can do it here as well so there is a, a, a link tool over here so i can uh, So all the other text from here it has flowed over here. Can you see that here? Yeah. Yes, sir. And this is in single column because I haven't applied the style over this one. I've just changed the uh, text of this particular box. I've changed only top and bottom. So left and right they're still touching. You can see that here. If I can show you in a left and right they're still touching. And those of you who know good Greek, you can read what it means. I don't know Greek. So another question from Tanvir Ahmed: uh -huh. Can we set a picture behind the text? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, the level that we were talking, we can just take it behind. We can increase or decrease the opacity. Very good question. So we can decrease the opacity and the level that I was showing to uh, in answer to another question. I can take it one level down and it will be behind the picture. Very good. So I'm very happy. Very, very happy with the Another question. Another question from Abhijit Banguli: Is it necessary to export in CMYK color range for newspapers? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I haven't, I haven't talked about you know all those things. Yes, uh, it's a, it's Im Im important because it is being printed in four things. If we are presenting it for uh, uh, web, then it will be in RGB. If we are, you know, I, I didn't go to all those properties. Yes, it is uh, cyan, okay. magenta, yellow, and black. So because you know it will be divided into four uh, colors when we. The same thing uh, comes for picture as well because in newspapers uh, mm -hmm. or in other news magazines we uh, import uh, raw pictures and change it back to TIFF. Now here uh, on page you are editing. Yes, uh, yes, 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 yes. So in fact, in fact, we can we can have you know the bounding boxes and we can use the bounding boxes to flow in uh, mm -hmm. you know uh, uh, cutouts and all. In fact, you can do all those stuff over here. So in in fact, if we get a chance to do another uh, uh, you know uh, web lecture on scribbers, then we'll be able to show you more uh, advanced right, right, stuff. Right, right. Yes. But yeah, I'm sure I that you know you with know. with this knowledge, uh, basically for students, I'm sure with this knowledge, you know, you can uh, uh, start making your uh, uh, tabloid pages immediately. Can you? Yes. Yes. Obviously. Because you know uh, it's 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 a lot easier, you know, as you can see, and it, it's it's a lot more useful to uh, get it. And uh, as someone was asking me, I mean, when you are getting this thing for free, and they keep on adding it, and there are a lot of uh, options of you know getting in, in plugins and all. So this is a very powerful software. So whoever is working on a laptop or you have a desktop or you know you have a, a place where you can work, it does not require a lot of space, and it's a very uh, fairly robust software. So you can start working on that from day one. Thank you, sir, for this wonderful session. Understand, you know, we uh, 
you know, as, as you were suggesting that, you know, as a journalist, uh, you know, we have worked on other software. So it's important that to the next generation, you know, we introduce some of these things so that, uh, you know, they can do it seamlessly because uh, a lot of the other times we have, we are working with uh, unlicensed software and all, and that's not very useful. So when you have something which is uh, free and open source and it is uh, as good as anything else, so why not use it? So I'm there for uh, students and any, anybody else, colleagues, if there is any other thing that you would want, please write an email or you have my WhatsApp number and if anything. And I would love to share with you. And uh, I have worked with this and I have enjoyed working in Scribus a lot. And I'm sure that for our, uh, our uh, teachers, uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, for, for our students, we will keep on using uh, Scribus at our regular classes, both for our honors and general students. We'll have InDesign and Quark Express also, but uh, for our regular class, we'll be using this because it's so much easier because it's seamless when we try. It's, it's the grammar of page making that counts. Thank you again. So, uh, Atoshi, uh, yes, we'll sir. take a. Am I audible, sir? Yes, yes, you're audible uh, and yeah. visible. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I will take this opportunity to thank our principal. Uh, Dr. Purnima Bishwas and uh, our uh, other faculties of the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication, Shragoni Mukhopadhyay, uh, Satyabrata Paul, Ushashi Roy Sen Gupta, Kanka Majumdar, Ananya Sen, and Jyoti Shaw for making this event a success. And Thank uh, you. Uh, and, uh, also. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We appreciate you all being here. So thanks again for joining us today. We will see you next time. Thank you.